Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a middle-aged patient who presented to the emergency department with right orbital pain, swelling and redness. Patient underwent CT orbit examination. On the CT orbit examination, we can see there is right-sided proptosis. There is subcutaneous edema in the right preorbital region. We can also see retrobulbar soft tissue edema. And as you scroll back and forth, we can see asymmetric thickening of the extraocular muscles. And we can also see engorged, asymmetrically dilated, hyperdense superior ophthalmic vein on the right side. Due to concern for superior orbital vein thrombosis of unexplained etiology, patient was referred for CT angiogram examination. On the CT angiogram examination, we can clearly see markedly dilated superior ophthalmic vein which has same density as the arterial system and in the region of the right cavernous sinus there appears to be a direct communication between the right cavernous segment of internal carotid artery to cavernous sinus we can also see asymmetrically dilated bulging right cavernous sinus imaging appearances are concerning for direct carotid cavernous fistula Patient underwent digital subtraction catheter angiogram examination on the DSA examination as the contrast is injected into the right internal carotid artery. We can see Petra segment, cavernous segment of internal carotid artery. There appears to be a small aneurysm in the cavernous segment of the internal carotid artery and we can see early filling retrogradely of the right superior ophthalmic vein which is markedly dilated. DSA examination confirms direct carotid cavernous fistula. Patient underwent transarterial embolization of right ICA with intentional parent vessel sacrifice. Post-procedural DSA shows complete occlusion of right internal carotid artery. To summarize, our patient had carotid cavernous fistula and we saw retrograde filling of right superior ophthalmic vein which had same contrast density as the internal carotid artery. We saw direct communication between the cavernous segment of internal carotid artery and cavernous sinus which is asymmetrically bulging. In terms of classification, it can be classified based on vascular anatomy as direct or indirect type. Our patient had direct communication between the cavernous segment of ICA and carotid sinus. There is also barrow calcification which is of four types. Our patient had type A carotid cavernous fistula where there was direct communication between ICA and cavernous sinus. In terms of imaging findings as we saw in our patient there was proptosis, retrobulbar fat stranding and edema and enlargement of extraocular muscle. As we saw in our patient there will be enlargement of superior ophthalmic vein bulging and asymmetric enlargement of cavernous sinus. In type A, as we saw in our patient, there was direct fistulous communication between the ICA to cavernous sinus and as demonstrated on DSA, there is rapid shunting of contrast from ICA to cavernous sinus extending into the superior ophthalmic vein. In terms of management, patient can be observed conservatively or can be treated with carotid artery compression. Our patient underwent endovascular treatment with sacrifice of ICA with embolization coils. Patient can also be treated surgically. I hope you found this case of CC fistula interesting and informative. Thanks for your attention.